Hey everybody, Jordan here, the PH is silent. Today we're going to discuss the Spell Plague, um, but before we discuss the Spell Plague, we need to kind of set the stage with the planes of existence. So backing up a bit, in AD&D, the various planes, the astral planes, the abyss, the elemental planes, etc., they were divided up in a great wheel. And this was called the Great Wheel Cosmology. The basic structure was that the prime material plane was in the center by the ethereal plane, followed by the elemental planes, then the astral planes, and finally the outer planes. There were 16 outer planes, and they were arranged in a circle, and, that, and they corresponded to a particular alignment. There was lawful good all the way to chaotic neutral. Now in third edition, they retconned this whole system and replaced it with the World Tree Cosmology. Many of the planes that you have come to love remained, but they were just shif shifted around to, to kind of reshape to fit a tree-like structure. Um, some of them didn't make it, like I can't find uh, Mechanus or Limbo, they don't seem to be in the World Tree model. Now the prime material plane in this model acted as the trunk of the tree with various branches and roots stretching out to the outer planes. Um, the plane of shadow was upgraded from a dinky demiplane to coexist with the prime material plane. The astral plane became the, the in-between. It was what you traveled through to reach the other planes, the branches, so to speak. So by now it should be no secret that Shar hates Mistra. And this stemmed all the way back to when Mistra and Saloon helped defeat Shar during the creation myth. Shar hated Mistra for siding with Saloon and for creating the weave, something that she herself wanted to control. Shar convinced Siric to do what the god of murder does best, murder someone. He went into Dwemerheart, Mistra's realm, and assassinated her. With Mistra dead, there was nothing to hold the weave together, and it was torn apart, which had dramatic effects on Turil, the heavens, and all of the other planes of existence. Shar's original plan was to seize control of the weave upon Mistra's death, but she miscalculated. The weave collapsed so completely that Shar not only failed to gather up its fraying threads, but she also lost control of the shadow weave. When the Spell Plague hit, there was a loss of cohesion within the astral plane, reshaping it into an amorphous astral sea. The domains of the gods went flying freely through the astral sea, merging with one another, or splitting apart, or just being destroyed entirely. As was the case with Mistress Realm, Dwemerheart. So Dwemerheart was disintegrated at once when Mistra was killed, and the deity Savras, who lived there, was also killed. Now the deity Azuth, he was hurled away into the Nine Hells, where he was devoured by Asmodeus, who then stole his divine essence. Asmodeus became a deity and hurled the abyss into the elemental chaos. There's a subplot here where demons and devils have never really got along, and they were constantly fighting. So when Asmodeus became a deity, he finally had the power to seek some revenge, and he hurled the abyss out of the astral sea and into the elemental chaos below. Finally, Siric was found guilty of Mistra's murder and was imprisoned for eternity. Turil and the Plains no longer resembled the World Tree model. Instead, they were, they, it was a sphere that was split into two axes. Thus, the new name for the cosmology became the World Axis model. The prime material plane is at the center with the astral sea above and the elemental chaos below. Shar also combined the plane of shadow with the parts of the negative energy plane um, and created the Shadow Fell, which touched all parts of Turil, placing the Feywild and the Shadow Fell on either side of Turil. So above is the Astral Sea with the various deity domains floating freely, and below is the Elemental Chaos. It's said that the Elemental Chaos formed when all of the, uh, the Elemental Planes and the positive and negative energy planes kind of collapsed into each other and just created this chaotic force. But the Elemental Chaos was there before, so I'm kind of confused. The e Elemental Chaos was ruled by Primordials. So I'm wondering if when Abir Turil was sundered, did the Elemental Chaos go with Abir and the Astral Sea went with Turil? And with the events of the Spell Plague, the Elemental Chaos reformed on this side or it rejoined with Abir's Elemental Chaos? So I don't know. I guess that's a question I have for you, the viewer. Um, if anybody else, else there knows, or was this just an oversight that um, Wizards of the Coast had when they were making 4th edition? Uh, regardless, it's kind of interesting to think about, like, Turil is the fulcrum where elemental forces and divine forces meet. 
Now, not only did the spell plague cause all these problems with the, uh, the various planes of existence, it changed the face of Trill forever. If you remember in the last video, um, Yafil was released from the Death Moon Orb through a storm of blue fire. Now on Turil, the spell plague was this blue fire that just engulfed everything. The blue flames spread across Turil like a raging forest fire anywhere that there was magic, which with connecting portals and planar gates on Turil, it spread quickly. Thousands of spellcasters were either destroyed outright or went insane. Many who survived lost their ability to use arcane magic. It was through a planar gate that the spell plague traveled to a beer, and parts of a beer were then transported into Turil, bringing with it the dragonborn race. The spell plague affected the landscape, reshaping the land by cutting crevasses. Often the land would move up and down like an ocean. Parts of the earth would break apart and float by themselves, and these became known as earth moats. A huge rift opened in the Sea of Fallen Stars, causing the water level to drop. Mulharand was completely destroyed during the Spell Plague, and the Mulharandi pantheon thus disappeared. Chult became an island breaking off from the mainland, and Evermeet was pushed into the Feywild. The original home of the halflings, the Shar, became a wasteland. The blue flame killed whatever it touched. Now this crazy stuff lasted for 10 years. 10 years of blue fire, earthquakes, magic not working, gods dying, and the fabric of reality reshaping itself. By 1395 DR, the majority of effects came to an end, and arcane magic had returned to some normality. The ethereal plane was destroyed, and spellcasting was dramatically changed, as outlined in the 4th edition system. Afterwards, there were many areas of wild magic or dead magic zones. The weave was hurt, or maybe just flat out destroyed. Spellcasters retaught themselves how to cast magic in this new world. One interesting thing that came out of the spell plague was the spell scarred. So when a creature ventured too close to areas where the spell plague exists, they could gain a spell scar. And this became a whole subclass that you could play in 4th edition D&D that was related directly to what was happening in their timeline of the Forgotten Realms. Now, spell scarred characters were outcasts. They were thought to be contagious and nobody wanted to be associated with them. So your character could have a spell scar and kind of be thought of as a disease, but you could also harness the power of the spell scar and level up with it. By taking certain feats, you gain access to spell scar powers that you could use instead of your normal daily or encounter powers. And I know 4th edition gets a lot of crap, but I really love the tools that they gave players. There's just so much customization options if you wanted to do that. And so if your character in your game got touched by blue fire and you wanted to harness the power of that blue flame, I just thought that was really cool. Well, everybody, that's it for today. The face of Faerun has been changed forever. If you enjoyed the spell plague, give us a like. And if you enjoy these videos, think about subscribing. Did I get something wrong or are there parts that I missed? Are you as confused about the elemental chaos as I am? feel free to leave a comment and tell me. I'll try to answer any questions that I get. And thanks again for watching everyone. I'll see you next Wednesday.